Eyes are now on accused killer Paul Bernardo in a downtown... The jury will hear from... Welcome back to our channel. Today, we are going to dive into the chilling and baffling case of the Ken and Barbie murders. I'm a Barbie girl in the Barbie world Black in plastic, it's fantastic In contrast to their sweet doll-like nicknames, this true crime story has anything but pink and glitter. Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka looked like normal newlyweds, but the Ken and Baby Killers murdered three people and raped at least 14 in late 1980s and early 90s Ontario. At first glance, Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka certainly didn't seem like a pair of serial killers. They may have looked like a normal young couple from the outside, but the Ken and Barbie killers were anything but. Before Paul Bernardo was put behind bars for multiple murders, tortures and rapes, he was a salesman by trade that lured his female victims using pickups and pitches he learned on his day job. He studied how to entice women like he studied how to do well in business. He read the novel American Psycho like his Bible. And when he met and married Carla Homolka, his sadistic streak only increased as she encouraged his behavior. The Ken and Barbie killers were born. In the end, the Ken and Barbie killers were found to be responsible for at least 13 rapes and three murders in and around Toronto between 1986 and 1992. This is the chilling story of Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka. Well, before they became the Ken and Barbie killers, Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka had an immediate attraction, one which only intensified when Bernardo discovered that, unlike the other girls he had dated, Omolka shared the same sick fantasies. They quickly began a sadomasochistic relationship in which Bernardo acted as an abusive master and Homolka as a willing slave. The whole while they dated, Paul Bernardo was also brutally raping girls in Scarborough with Homolka's knowledge and approval. Bernardo and Homolka eventually became engaged. Homolka described to a friend how Paul and I are happier than ever, He's being so great, so romantic, but that's typical of my honey. But the truth was that three years into their relationship, Paul Bernardo was getting bored. He complained to the Homolka that she was not a virgin when they met and soon turned his sick attention elsewhere to Homolka's 15-year-old sister, Tammy. Far from being outraged at Bernardo's desires, Homolka once again encouraged them. She told Bernardo that she wanted him to have her little sister's virginity for a Christmas present. Thus, the crime that remains perhaps the Ken and Barbie killer's most disturbing was set in motion. On December 23, 1990, while at a Christmas party at the Homolka family home, Omolka spiked her own sister's drinks with animal anesthetics she had stolen from the clinic where she worked. That night, while the rest of the family was asleep and Tammy was unconscious, Homolka held a halophane soaked cloth over her sister's mouth and took turns raping her with her fiancé while videotaping the whole brutal incident. When Tammy began choking up vomit, the couple panicked and tried to hide the evidence before calling an ambulance. The teenager never regained consciousness and was pronounced dead at the hospital. Although the mysterious chemical burn on her face was noted, the drugs in her system were not detected and her death was ruled an accident as the result of choking on vomit from alcohol poisoning. Once again, the Ken and Barbie killers evaded justice. Rather than sate Paul Bernardo's appetite for blood, the murder of Tammy Lynn Homolka only increased it. In 1991, Homolka lured another teenager she had befriended at work to the home she now shared with Paul Bernardo. The couple again drugged the girl, abused her, and videotaped it. Only this time the Jane Doe survived and woke up with no memory of the horrific events. Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka married on June 29, 1991, the very same day a horrified couple canoeing in Lake Gibson discovered concrete blocks containing human body parts in the water. The remains belonged to 14-year-old Leslie Mahaffey, who had disappeared on June 15. 
she had been kidnapped by the Ken and Barbie killers and abused over the course of several days. As this grisly discovery was made, the killers enjoyed an elaborate wedding ceremony which included their entrance in a white horse-drawn carriage. Almost a year later, on April 16, 1992, the couple struck again, this time grabbing and killing 15-year-old Kristen French. They left her body battered and her hair partially shaved in a ditch along a rural road. Police soon realized that the two murders were connected. After the release of a composite sketch that resembled Paul Bernardo, tips were called in, some from co-workers and friends who reported Bernardo's disturbing penchant for violence. In January 1993, Omolka left her husband after he dealt her a particularly vicious beating with a flashlight. Within two months, a DNA sample taken from Bernardo turned up as a match for the Scarborough rapist, and he was put under surveillance before eventually being arrested in February of 1993. Carla Homolka quickly got a lawyer and sought a plea bargain in exchange for testifying against Paul Bernardo. She claimed Bernardo had told her he'd raped at least 30 women. The Ken and Barbie killers were now pitted against one another. The government agreed to a 12-year sentence in exchange for her cooperation. Um, if I didn't turn the water tap off completely, he'd hit me. Um, if, uh, if I didn't say the right thing, he'd hit me. He held knives to my throat. He told me I'd better watch my back. Um, he said, always watch your back with me. Her feet were tied with that electrical, um, electrical cord that he had used to kill Leslie. And there was electrical cord around her neck. Although this backfired dramatically, when the videotapes the couple had made showcasing their gruesome crimes were discovered and Homolka's true nature was revealed. Carla Homolka was not the abused victim she had attempted to portray herself as but rather a cruel sadist. Homolka was ultimately released in 2005 and since remarried and given birth. Paul Bernardo was found guilty of all charges against him and consequently sentenced to life for the rape murder and kidnap of two teenage girls, though it is believed he killed a couple more. His rape victims number somewhere in the double digits, presumably around 13. Bernardo's application for parole in 2018 after 25 years in prison was denied after only 30 minutes of deliberation. A lawyer on behalf of the victim's families reported that there's never been an apology by Paul Bernardo there's been never any indication whatsoever of remorse. Indeed, Bernardo admitted to the court that he hadn't felt anything for his victims at the time of his crimes. So there you have it, the story of Barbie and Ken, the murderers of Ontario. If you learned something new, be sure to hit the subscribe button as we upload the grim and the scary every day here on Somber Studios. Thank you for joining us on this emotional journey into the chilling true crime story of the Ken and Barbie murders. If there's one thing we take away from this case, it's that behind every headline, there are real people and real families whose lives are forever changed. Remember to treat true crime stories with respect, empathy, and sensitivity. Until next time, stay safe and stay curious.